you will wear a flower in your hair and that is not just ornamental it has more of a meaning a flower represents the goddess Laka Laka is the goddess of goddess of Hula she is the queen of voice because voice and chanting go along with dance and she's the guardian of the forest and foliage when you wear a a bit of the forest and foliage that's in tribute to Laka. When you come to the halau, to the school, you don't just walk right in, you wait at the entrance and the kumu inside looks to see if you're ready to be invited in. If you look distracted and you're fixing your hair and you're looking at your phone and you're talking to your friend, you will not be allowed into the halau. You have to look focused and ready if the kumu sees that you are ready to come in, she will do a chant to invite you in. When you get into the halau, uh, there may be an altar to Laka in there on the eastern side of the halau because Laka is, is imagined to reside in the east. And you will say a chant to invite her presence into your, into your class, into your performance to enhance your your spirit and your dancing. We talked about taboos. In a halau there are taboos. Um, a lot of you in your assignment about taboo mentioned in other cultures you don't show the soles of your feet. Likewise, uh, even though you're barefoot in the halau, you don't point your feet at anyone or show the bottoms of your feet. When you're sitting on the ground you have to tuck your feet under so they're not like up in anybody's face. There's a taboo about stepping on your pa'u skirt. You don't step on your pa'u skirt or any part of your gear because it has your mana. You might be familiar with, again, the dojo, the idea of chi. In martial arts, you have chi, your energy, your, your spirit. In Hawaiian, that's mana and your gear that you dance in, like your pa'u skirt, from dancing in them, they become infused with your mana. And if you step on them, that's like uh, disrespectful to yourself and to your mana. So to make sure that you don't ever step on your skirt, the protocol for putting it on is, um, I mean, you can see that it's, a, it's an elastic waistband, so it would be easiest to be able to just pull it up and step into it, but but no, the protocol is um, you lower it down over your head and shimmy it down to make sure you don't step on it. There's also rituals for when you're going to dance or perform a song. And um, here's, here's a way to picture that. Say there's a gathering in Hawaii, a luau, a party, a festival, a ceremony, some gathering of people, it's typical for a person or people to get up and do dances. And if that's going to happen, then you announce to everybody that you're going to perform. So you have an olapa, the drummer, usually the drummer is going to do the chanting of the song. And the drummer says, Ho'oma kau kau to see if the dancers are ready. And if they're ready, then they stand at attention. They hear a special drum beat from the alapa and they stand at attention and say, I, and then they announce the name of the song to everyone. So for example, I, Euno Kavika Kahekea Onapua. And then the alapa says, Pa, and hits a beat and the dance starts singing the song and the dancers dance. At the end of the song, the protocol is for the dancers to say who the song was in honor of. In the example of that song, which was about King David, at the end, um, the dancers would say, a no, a no, in honor of, kalani, kavika, kala, ka'awa. And the Olapa would hit another certain beat and signal that the dancers are now allowed to relax and the song is over. So there's a whole protocol on top of the dance itself. 
you might be thinking, okay, a song about King David. I, th I thought Hula tells a story. Uh, what 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 story is there? So so let's talk a little bit about that idea that Hula quote unquote tells a story. You're also going to see when we talk about India, dance, the dance of India, the idea that it tells a story. Let's maybe break down more specifically what it means for a dance to tell a story, because it kind of that phrase makes you picture charades like somebody's acting out pantomiming the words of the song or it's like sign language or something but it's not and it's it's easy to get that misconception because if you were to go online and look up what do hula gestures mean you'll see stuff like oh this means flower this means sun whatever but that's not always true any choreographer can prescribe whatever gestures they want to have the dancers represent the the information in the song. So there, it's not like there's a set vocabulary dictionary of gestures that mean certain things in Hawaiian dance. On top of that, the story that the dancers are telling, I mean, the, the chanter singing the song, the song has words. It's not like there, there's, the dancer needs to communicate the story to the audience because the song has words in it telling the story, on top of which most people already know the story. So we're talking about a song that has words that are telling a story that everybody listening already knows and the dancers, the burden is not on them really to tell the story. They are doing select gestures that echo kind of parts of the the, the lyrics kind of um, to give you an example there's a there's a kahiko that you will learn in a halau no luna ike hale and the words of it basically say um, up there is the house, down here the ocean is churning. Sit down, ocean, calm down. I'm worried about the lahua flowers. In honor of Hiaka Ikapolio Pele. So, to us listening, you're probably thinking that song makes no sense. Who on earth is Hiaka Ikapolio Pele? Um, but to any Hawaiian person, that totally made sense. You know, they understood what it was about and what it was talking about and who everybody was. Uh, the dance, the, the what, picture it like this. Okay, say you go to a church picnic and somebody gets up and they're gonna do a dance and they announce that the song is, uh, all the animals are getting on the ark. And say the song goes, all the animals are getting on the ark, two by two, they're coming in. The rain is starting to fall really hard. People are getting really scared. In honor of Noah, boom. You probably totally understood what that song was about and what, what it meant and who Noah was. Like, you didn't need to be told any of that. Like you, you understood already what the song was about and what it was saying. And if there were dancers acting out parts of the story, you didn't really, you wouldn't really have needed that to understand the story. So likewise in Hula, everybody's listening to a song that they know what it's about. They know what the story is. And the dancers are just sort of echoing little parts of the story like in no luna ike hale uh often there will be a, a gesture to show a bear is the house everybody knows that means pele's house the song doesn't say it uh they know why the ocean is churning they know who hiaka ike polio pele is so uh they don't need the dancers to to tell the story for them 
you're going to see when we talk about Indian dance that it mentions Indian dance tells a story and it's telling the story of the, the ancient Indian scriptures and religious and uh, stories and stories of heroes and royalty and all, and all of that. But it's kind of similar in that, again, it's not this literal pantomime acting out of a story. There are certain gestures, like there's a, a gesture in classical Indian dance that looks like someone playing a flute, and that indicates Krishna, who played a flute, and, but it doesn't mean that the dancer is standing there acting out all the words to, to a story. Not going to say anything more about dance in India because your next assignment is about that. So I'll just wait for you to, to read about that. But if you have any questions about Hawaiian dance or want to know more or any of that, uh, please just email me at any time and I'll be happy to talk to you about it. And for now, I will just say aloha and see you in class.